Hey everyone, it is your fabulous trio minus our host moderator, Donald. We are having technical difficulties in South Florida today. Apparently there has been cell phone outages. I don't know if that's around the country or just in South Florida, but he also has internet outages. <laughs> so we don't have Donald tonight because we have, he's not, he has no internet. So that is obviously a problem. Welcome to Come On Now, the podcast. Tonight, I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomak, and I have with me the one, the only, not one, not two, but three-time CFL Great Cup champion, Nick Taylor. Nick, introduce yourself. I, I almost felt like Booker T right now. I was about to say, not one, not two, but three-time WWE champ, world champion, but... uh. It's me, Nick Taylor, man. I'm back here again. Um, like Rudy just said, three-time CFL champion, former NFL player, Minnesota Vikings, also D1 basketball player for three years, and I also averaged 32 points for Rudy's um, AAU team. You know just how it keeps going up every episode. It's because I'm telling a lie. But I believe it in my heart that I could have did that if I got up in my shots. As Alan Iverson said he would, and nowadays to average 43 points a game. But did you practice? You talking about practice, man. <laughs> I was in high school. I wasn't coming to no damn AAU. I just showed up for the games, and I got my four air balls up the game. <laughs> so, once again, we thank you. Uh, we broke 100,000 views in less than 30 days with our channel, and we are thankful to all of our subscribers and followers. We appreciate your comments, your likes, positive or negative. We appreciate it. We, we take the feedback. We're happy to interact with you guys in messages. As you see, I will always interact. I have no problem with it. No matter what you call me, you call me crazy. I'm crazy. It works. Love it. But again, thank you. Like, subscribe comment greatly appreciate your support so we're going to hit our first topic of the night <clears throat> the nba all-star weekend debacle it was pretty bad in my opinion you have players that chose to basically not care nick what were your thoughts on the all-star weekend from friday to sunday Heck, did you really even watch any of it? Rudy, I know I, I squeezed some of I squeezed some in, but it was so unwatchable that I had to just turn that shit off. What, 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 what did you think? I loved it. It was the best weekend I ever had watching sports basketball. It was, I, it was great. It was amazing. I just had to keep tuning in and watching. And then I seen Anthony Edwards shoot the ball with his left hand when he had nine seconds to get down on the other end of the court. And I said, yes, this is what I want to watch. Yeah. No, actually, I did not enjoy the weekend at all. It was it was terrible. Um, I used to look forward to it from all the way from the the, the, the celebrity game the, on Friday until the end of the weekend because they used to have all types of celebrities in there growing up that you actually wanted to see. Now we have people in there that I have no idea. Maybe I'm not in tune with this new age of of things that's going around, the TikTokers, the influencers. Maybe I'm not in tune. Maybe it's me, Rudy. Maybe it's freaking me. I I don't know what's going on. I know Michael Parsons bald. I don't, I, but whatever. Let's go to Saturday. Lord have mercy. Let's go to Saturday. I was not going to watch it, but Rudy like, man, we're a sports podcast. Do your fucking job. And I wanted to tell Rudy, fuck you. But, you know, in the light of the situation, I say, let me tune in. So, like I said, I seen Anthony Edwards in a in a competition where you're a young player, you're trying to be seen, everybody, you know, this is when you put your name out there that I'm coming for all you motherfuckers in the league. You old people, get out my fucking way. It's a new man in fucking town. And he went out there in a skills competition. Granted, the skill competition is a really lackadaisical, laid back type of competition. But these motherfuckers weren't even, didn't even know the directions where to go. One person did it wrong. And this is a, a saying that every coach said, watch the motherfucker in front of you and don't do what he do it if he do it wrong. 
Like, this is what you learn as a kid, as a five-year-old kid. Hey, man, watch the person in front of you. Don't do what that person did if they did it wrong. They did it right. You do it just like that person. Somebody went the wrong way. The next person came and went the wrong way. I said, Lord, give me strength. What the hell is going on? Then I said the whole Anthony Edwards thing. He went with the left hand. When they needed him to, and I know Wemby is like, like Wemby took it serious. Wemby wanted to win. And that's why he's going to be one of the best players in the league because you already could see it in him. He got that dog in him. He, but these other players, they, they didn't seem to care. And then the Lord gave me, oh, my gosh, the Lord gave me strength. It's going to be my line tonight. Jalen Brown. I'm, I'm not going to kill you probably like Rudy is going to kill you because I'm going to appreciate you because you are actually a star that entered the dunk contest. And I think you had the whole star world in your hand. Like, I think if you did good in that thing and the crowd went wild, other stars would have been like, oh, maybe we should participate. But you went out there and you did a, sal- you did a salute to D. Brown. D. Brown, 1991 dunk contest. D. Brown went famously. Uh, this man, <laughs> this man, Jalen Brown, dunked the ball and did this after. And everybody else is dunking over seven footers, six, eight players, six, ten people. And he dunked over this guy named Kai. I don't know. He does this internet thing. I'm not into him. I see him every now and then. But the guy is probably like five foot four. And then he was sitting down. So probably three foot three. At the most, like, he wasn't even, like, I could put my little kid in the pool because it says, you know, three feet of water, little kids could enter. And that's what he jumped over. And I was like, okay, this is embarrassing. But the only thing I looked forward to was three-point contest. Three-point contest is great every year. Hey, put the three-point contest to 16 motherfucking people in there. Let's get everybody in the three-point contest because that's the only thing people take serious. Um... Let's take out the the deep ball a little bit. It's a little too much gimmicky. I guess they want more points. Ah, take it out. Not a fan of it. And then we go to Sunday. Sunday, Lord. Well, real quick, did did you see the the Steph Curry, Sabrina Ionescu shootout? Okay. That was actually good, Rudy. And I know that you're not a big fan of the men and women integrating and things like that. That was the highlight of the weekend. She came out there, and she really shot the ball. Perfect form. That shot was sweet. It came off her hands perfect. And, it, and then Steph looked like, damn, she really shooting. She put Steph, she put notice to Steph that she was there. But, you know, Steph, you know, stepped up. There was nothing to win for Steph in that whole situation. If he wins, hey, you beat a woman. If he loses, oh, my gosh, you lose to a woman. But he stepped up and did what Steph do, and I'm happy for him. I hope. I'm glad he celebrated and did his thing for the man. You know, he held us down. So I was okay with that. And they're talking about bringing maybe a two-on-two next year with Steph, you know, and Sabrina. And then you got um, Caitlin Clark and Dane. I will watch that because what that was, Rudy, when she dropped 45 the other night, I actually paid attention. She I, think she had four, I think she had 49 the night she broke the record. Oh, my gosh, Rudy. I looked at her. She she plays like a dude. She was coming off screens from 35 deep. No screens. Just coming up and pulling up. And I said, this girl has balls on her. She has big balls. Humongous. I mean. <laughs> so what did you think about the game on Sunday? The game on Sunday. Rudy, I have no problem with people like LeBron. Not putting full effort into it. LeBron has played in this, been in the game 20 years now. He gets a pass. But you young people, Anthony Edwards, the Jason Tatums, the Halliburtons, the Carl Anthony Towns, the Bam, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, whatever his name is. How, how do you pronounce Bam? out of body. I'm just joking. Bam's my guy. Uh, all these people, man. You have to play hard. You are coming up next. And I think this generation has it so good. They forgot the people who paved the way for them to get paid like this. And they paved the way to get for them to get paid like this because they brought it. They 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 stepped up for the competition. The 90s All-Star game. They motherfuckers was following each other. They didn't want nobody to score. They didn't care about the whole, anything that was going on. It was mano and mano. The best versus the best. And I'm going to show that I'm better than all of you guys. Charles Barkley going at it. 
MJ going at it. They didn't care who it was. Then Kobe came around, and for the next generation, he he kept that same mentality. Him, Tim Duncan of the world, man, they were doubling Kobe in the All Star game. Kobe literally got doubled in the All Star game. That tell you the the, the they didn't want to lose. They didn't they didn't care about none of the optics of it. It was about we're the best players in the world, and we're gonna come out here and we're gonna ball. We're gonna put on the show, but other than also, I'm better than you, motherfucker. I'm better. There's nothing you can do about it. You're the best. I'm the best. But I'm better. And that's what they, that's what they showed back then. And it's a shame right now. And I get it. They have a big weekend ahead of them. They have a lot of things going on. But one night, that's all we ask of you, you guys. And I'm not saying four quarters. The second half could be competitive. Find some way to make the second half competitive. First half, we lollygag, we play around, we throw lobs, we dunk, put on a show for the crowd. I guess it could basically be like the dunk contest for the All-Stars. Since they're not going to join in on Saturday night, this is the dunk contest for the All-Stars. Come on, step up. You young players should be salivating that freaking foaming out your mouth in these situations to to compete and show that you're up next. Because you're going to get more money you're going to get more sponsors, more people that are going to put more money in your pocket. And that's what y'all ultimately want because that's what I've been hearing. And maybe we should pay these guys $2 million, yeah. do, million. Do you blame anyone specifically or do you think it's a combination of guys? Oh, come on. Uh, no, 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 no. Gen- generally, do you think uh-huh. that, like, do you blame, is there any specific person? It might not be the, it might not be a player. Do you blame anyone specifically for what's happened to the NBA All-Star game? You know who we're going to blame right now. LeBron James. LeBron James, he I, is... I, I don't know if I, I would blame, blame him specifically. I am. Okay. I'm Tell a, me why. I'm going to blame LeBron because he's the face of this thing. So whatever LeBron do, if he set the tempo, like he set the tempo for the for the um, in-season tournament, everybody else is going to follow. He's the top. He's the head honcho. And I'm not saying LeBron got to set the tempo for the whole game because I don't think he should be even playing the whole game. But even the beginning of the second half, LeBron be like, hey, guys, let's fucking go. He come out there the first stretch, and he guard a motherfucker from half court. Everybody going to be like, it's for real. Let's go. Let's get this thing started. So, and LeBron's been here from previous generations. You know, he started from 2004 being in the All-Star game. So, he's the only person that's going to get people going. Other young players could probably get it rolling and get it going. But ultimately, it, the, the bus stops with LeBron. And I, I'm not putting, like, I don't want to seem like it's just LeBron because, I mean, ultimately other people could do things, but LeBron is the leader. He's still the leader of the NBA 20 years later. He still runs the show, and everybody knows that. So I'm going to put it on LeBron. Adam Silver, he says he's trying to do things. He talks to them repeatedly. Joe Dumars, talk to these people repeatedly. But ultimately, these guys, they want more money. So maybe if we, we say, hey, $2 million for the winners, zero for the losers. How are you going to steal what I was going to say right there? Because I told you that this week, man. You on, said man. put money. I said 2.5. I said 2.5 million, actually. Well, all right. I did say 2.5 million. Let's give Rudy that, the floor, <laughs> and talk about his 2.5 million. I, I, is that all you got? I mean, I don't want to cut you off. You got anything yeah, else? Right now, I think I, I think I rambled for a long time. Uh, okay. Look, um, I never plan on watching the All-Star game. I, Like I said last week, I might turn around the fourth quarter. Um, the celebrity game to me is an absolute waste of time. It's a, I guess it's a fun thing for certain people to do. I don't know yeah. why anyone would pay for a ticket to watch that garbage. Um, <clears throat> but that game was more competitive than the all-star game. Like it, these guys were actually wanting to win. Uh, but I didn't see any of it, by the way, I just saw highlights and I saw the final score and yeah, I mean, apparently Michael Barsons can really play some basketball. And he runs people over, and Puka Nakua can play some basketball. Uh, However, that skills competition on Saturday, I was actually out. Where the hell was I on Saturday night? I don't even remember, to be honest. But I was somewhere. Uh, I was with my, I was was at a gala for for, uh, Miami Day Trial Lawyers. And I'm at this gala, and I'm bored, and I'm sitting at the table, and I got my phone up like this on the on the thing, watching about ten minutes of that thing, and I watched the mistakes that they made on the basic course. I remember when Dwayne Wade did the, the skills competition; he wanted to win. 
Like this, 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 we are creating a generation of the softest men in the history of the United States. They are softer than butter and they carry it with them everywhere. They're not competitive. They don't care. All it is, is about the bag, the bag, the bag. And you know whose fault that is? People like Stephen A. Smith media members who've been pushing for years for these guys to get paid, blah, 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 blah. You know what you've created? You've created entitled divas. They're entitled. They feel, they literally at times, I mean, the fact when they compare themselves to slaves, and I know that's a topic that people don't want to talk about, but when you're making $15 million and you compare yourself to a slave, you should be ashamed of yourself because people were slaves. And they sure as hell weren't getting $50 million. So when I hear players say that, it's just, it just shows such a, a, a lack of, I mean, you're just got to be so dense. Like, how dense can you be? Like, can you imagine if Bill Russell was still alive and he heard a player making $50 million? I'm sure he probably did hear it before he passed away. When they would compare themselves to almost indentured servants. You are playing basketball. It's a sport. It's a child's game. And some people are blessed with the skill and the ability, the height, the strength to whether it's play basketball or football or baseball because there's only an elite few. There's 450 players in the league. How many guys that, I mean, heck, you, you got teammates from high school that are playing in Europe. What would they do to be playing in the NBA? They'd be making 10 times what they make in Europe where they've played on 15 different teams. I mean, heck, a kid from Northern I made Antonio Esther plays in the Philippines right now, or he's dead in the Philippines. What would he do for a child to, a child to play in the NBA? They would give their left nut to play in the NBA. <laughs> exactly. And they would give said $2 million for a minimum salary. And you got guys that are making $50 million sitting here bitching and moaning about everything. So that's, you mentioned the skills competition. When I saw Anthony Edwards shoot with his left hand, motherfucker, why are you there? And they had a chance to actually win. Yeah, they had a chance to win. Why are you? If he made that shot, he could have made it down there in eight seconds. Why are you even there? If that's what you planned on doing, why are you there? I mean, first I watched Pari Bancaro go the long way. Then I watched Trey Young go the long way. Then I watched this guy go the wrong way. I mean, they kept going the wrong way. You're sitting here like, the only guy in that group that cared about winning seemed to be Victor Wemby. Yeah. Wemby. Wemby. He was only my kid. He looked pissed. He looked pissed. Yeah. And you're sitting here, and, and you got guys that, if you're so disinterested, stay the fuck home. Tyrese Halliburton wanted to win. You could see it. He was competitive. There was the home crowd, Indiana. Those Indiana guys, they, they did win, and they wanted to win. But when Anthony Edwards, he's 23, 24, something like that, 22. I don't know how these, I'm not looking at it up right now, but shooting left handed, bro, like you're not taking it at all seriously. The thing with is, with any seriousness. The, the, thing is huh? with, the thing is with AE is everybody thought that before that, before that, that he was the guy, he gonna, he's going to embrace. Every competition, and he's gonna try to win. That's what everybody thought. You're like, oh, he has that motherfucking gene that I'm gonna fucking win everything. I'm gonna smash whoever's there, and that just I think that put a little sour taste in everybody's mouth about his him, and that that messed up his perception a little bit. I lost respect for him. I lost respect for him, and that's the guy that I would have put in my epic dunk contest. I have no respect for that guy. He's not a competitor. I watched Patrick Bailey say Anthony Edwards is a dog. No, he's not. No, he's not. Because a dog carries that everywhere. They want to win every time. Every time. Have Nobody you ever been, have you ever been in a race that you wanted to lose? I don't know. I'm the fastest motherfucker in the world to this day. Exactly. <laughs> so it way you didn't know if you were running next to Usain Bolt. Oh, we're running a forty. We're running a forty yard dash. I could beat the motherfucker. I think you probably could because forties is not a hundred. On a hundred, it'll take leave you ten minutes behind. But on the forty, you probably get it. A four. Two and a half? I mean, I don't know if he runs a fair two and a half in the 40 because he's a slow start. Yeah. You know, I mean, yelling at 959 in the 100, I mean. <laughs> What's it? What's it? Well, you want to win. I would beat 
my damn grandma in a fucking race right now. My, I'll be her ass in a 40. I'll be her by 39 yards. You ever play like, like you ever play Tonk or Spades? Yeah. People want to kill each other over that game. Dominoes. Like they want to fight. Dominoes. Jamaicans playing dominoes. I went to a college. I went to FIU. I would spend my days at Gracie's Grill in what? the FIU in the FIU Union. What? And we'd be playing dominoes all day long. Like I learned was like blood clot and stuff like that. And watching dudes take a domino, slam the shit out of it on the damn table. And and watching people really want to get into fights over a game of dominoes. Yeah. Like if you're a competitor, you're always competing. And that's what's happening with men now. We are raising pussies. And I blame myself as a man who's who's raising that generation. We're probably a little bit older than me. Those the, the, the baby boomer is really the parent of these kids today. Mm-hmm. Unless you had a kid when you were 17 you know or, or, or 18. But you know it's... What? Oh, I, thought I think the generation is raising kids like that because how we were, how our generation was raised, this is what I heard from people. They don't want to put that... Like, the, the shit that we went through or a lot of kids or people went through in our generation, they don't want to put that on their kids. So... And I you have to find a fucking balance between how you were raised. And you can find a fucking balance. I ain't saying you got to go hmm. on the deep end and be a fucking pussy. I, but, I don't. I don't take pride when people say, "Yo, I got my my parents beat my ass." Like, yeah, for, that's when I hear stuff like that. There's it bothers me because it's in like like that's no their badge of honor in beating your kids. Yeah. No, there's discipline, and these kids have not even been disciplined. Because their attitude is one of entitlement. They've been entitled since they were in elementary school. People sucking them off because they can play ball. I mean, that's the NIL. It's all these things that are going, they're all coming to fruition. And now the same people that are pushing for these guys to get paid, and I have no problem with them getting paid. I do think there's a major restructure of the salaries. In the NBA, they're yeah. out of control. They're gonna do something, but they have there's to. gonna be a lockout. Eventually, there's gonna be a lockout because you, you, there's no way you, they're not paying people soccer salaries. They're gonna and you're, there's gonna be a they're massive. No, huh? it's gonna be pay to play. Yeah, no, it, yeah, they, it's gonna have to happen because when guys are missing sitting out 20 games, 15 crying about a 65 game schedule to, to win an award, and you're sitting out 10 games because you're resting. Let's play stop bullshit ourselves. This has been a it's been a number of years, and now all of a sudden you have a pussy for a commissioner who has no balls. And you saw it when he wouldn't keep he wouldn't suspend Draymond Green for the rest of the year. He showed his face. He's know. the softest com- he's I don't, soft. I don't think he should have though. He absolutely no, but what do you do? An indefinite I, suspension the last draft games? That's not indefinite. I think fifteen games was good. Well, he didn't get to fifteen. He pitched the guy in the face. After choking someone out from the heart, like what? What? What are we doing? It, 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 but this Ooh. guy, it, this guy does not create real rules. He, he's he's the same guy who was pushing load management when David Stern was commissioner. He was the one behind that shit. He was. There's many podcasts I've watched in the past week of professional athlete basketball players who said the guy that was pushing them more than anybody was Adam Silver. Adam Silver is having the hens come back to roost, or whatever the hell you call it. Because what we watched on Sunday, for, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, let's get back to the, the let's go back to the um, skills competition. Yeah. I turned it off after 10 minutes. When I watched Anthony Edwards left hand, I turned it off. I was like, I'm not wasting my time. Yeah. I got home from my gala. I pop on the fight, the UFC fight. And we're at the end of the dunk contest. And I saw that, I mean, Jaime Hawkins had a better dunk than Jalen Brown did. The whole, I mean, he jumped over Shaq. And he uh, brought uh, him over in his grave. Huh? Yeah, I mean, he jumped over. He jumped over Shaq, and yet he gets a forty-six, Top and Jalen Brown gets a forty-eight point six on Top jumping over a Smurf. Hopkins dunk was nice. I missed that one, but I saw the dunks that Jalen Brown yeah. did. They were terrible. A three hundred and sixty between the leg to a two hand dunk. But there was one that I saw Matt McClung do, where people were like, "What did he do?" Where he actually. Like, Drop the ball and then caught the ball again, and then dunk. like that's unbelievable. Look, so the problem is with the dunk contest. The, yeah, we got we need to wrap this up. So, but we gonna we no, gonna, we got time, man. It's, yeah. like, it's like I got plenty of time, man. Yeah. The thing with the dunk contest is you have to be so fucking 
You have to come up with the, the, the craziest jumps. You literally have to throw the ball off your elbow, off your head, rub your ears two times, and then dunk the ball to get a nice score. The thing is, back in the when when go look at Dominique and Jordan dunk contest. That was yeah. not that great. Of a well, dunk. it looks it looks basic comparable to now, but now, you know what you had. But you know what you had from Dominique Wilkins? Power, ridiculous power. Yeah, but if that ball bounces off the ground and bounces back through the net. Jalen actually, I brought, love that shit. Jalen actually brought some nice power. Until he did this, and then he, oh, yeah, I'm going to put my arm in front of my head. I jumped over a full for five smile, hey. sitting in a chair. And hey. they did actually, they did that, I think, because so, he was streaming yeah. while he was sitting in the chair. Yeah, because that's what he Like, did. it's in bed. Like, the dunk contest, we, we put together our list for the dunk contest. I think the dunk contest is dead. I don't, I don't want to hear about bringing people from all around the country who are not NBA players. That's ridiculous because nobody cares. Hey. Nobody cares about those people. So, I'm not. Who the hell is paying five hundred, a thousand dollars to go to the All Star Game Skills Day to watch some dude that you can watch at the park? And no one's doing that. It's stupid. It's a. It's offensive, in fact, to a consumer. Like, come on. Are you, am I going to go to freaking uh, shit? Let me go to. I don't know. Ruth Chris and you you bring me an Outback steak steakhouse you know steakhouse butter from Outback come on like no that's not what I'm paying for yeah and so when I look now you mentioned that okay the the the, the three point competition I I love the three point competition um I didn't see it I know Dame won my problem with the Sabrina thing with Dame, with Steph and it was cute and I watched it I did actually watch a replay of it did she shoot? She, with- she shot from the same line, but she shot with a different ball. That's what I was going to ask. I and mean, if you're not going to shoot with the same ball, it's not the same competition. That's yeah. ridiculous. I mean, it's not the same competition, and that's my problem with it. And I, when I watched it, her first rack was like butter. I mean, it was swish, 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 swish. But, but, you know how a female ball swishes through the net to a man's ball swishes through the well, net. Of course, it's, it's you're a- like, how do the net doesn't move when the female ball goes through? Because it didn't, because the ball's so small and that's bigger. There was at least five shots that she put up that wouldn't have gone in with a, with a man's ball because of how they bounced. Yeah. They wouldn't have gone in. Because you can watch where it landed comparable to where, you know, the size. It's that much of a difference, but that's huge. It was cute for the whole. It was cute. Man versus woman. Yeah, you know, they can do it. Equality. Yeah. Everybody has a voice. We, we know why they did it. They did it because nobody watches the WNBA and they're doing everything that they can to provide eyes to the WME. And it, yeah, and she's one of the faces of the league. She plays in New York. Mm-hmm. She's really damn good. I mean, she's a ball player. Like, really? I, I give her credit. She's a ball player. So, but if you have a competition, the competition has to be 1,000% equal. And when Kenny Smith is on TV saying, shoot from the Rinders line, get the fuck out of here. It's not a competition then. No. Because if Steph Curry shoot from the Rinders line, it's a free throw for him, for Christ's sake. He, he might not he, miss. He can shoot with his left hand. Yeah, he, he wouldn't miss. So I would be mad at that. I give him credit from shooting from the men's line, but at the same time, it needs to be the same damn ball. So as far as Sunday, the game, the game is an abomination. Like it's it's embarrassing. The game you're talking about was that 2008, 2001 game where the East beat the West 111 and 110. And they, I mean, the, the East was down. 20, 19, and came back and won the game in the fourth quarter. That's when that 20 in the fourth quarter. And then you got Kobe going back and forth, Marbury hitting shots, double teaming Kobe. There were 50 some odd fouls in that game. You know that there was only three trade fouls in this game on Sunday? Three. To, to watch these guys just move right out of the way, it's embarrassing. And I will say this to you, and this is this is this is 100 percent what I believe. They're entitled. And they've proven that only thing that gets them to do anything is money. Yep. So if you want to fix the all star game, it's very simple. Pay them. And you pay them to pay five. Uh, they get right now 50 grand for the loser, 100 grand for the freaking winner. Bullshit. That's strip club money for them. Loser that's get the, loser get that's, no, you make it $2.5 million. I don't give a shit if you're making 50 million. 2.5 million is 2.5 million. That's a lot of damn money yeah. for, for, for 30 minutes of work. Yeah. All right. You win. You win that. You lose, you get shit. Cause, but look, you know that's why, it. You know why that'll be great? 
maybe the people that making fifty million that would get that, but everybody's not making that at this. No, but everybody is. Yeah. Not everybody is. Look at Jalen. Mm-hmm. Jalen Brunson mm-hmm. got his little contract that they snuck in there. He's out there hooping. Two point five. Like, 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 look at this. There was this was what was posted by um, Sam Amick of the Athletic last week, right after that, that there was already conversations about players wanting to get paid. See, that's the problem. They want to get paid to do something that is an honor. It's an honor. So if you're not going to pay them, the other options cancel the whole fucking thing. Hey. There's no better wasting any of time. Give them a 10-day vacation. By the way, there's some games going on tonight, and the comedy is, you know that LeBron is playing Steph? You know who's not playing? LeBron. He's not. I'm he's not cool. playing. I'm he cool. says he has an ankle injury. Gonna... How do you have an ankle injury in the last nine days? I was going to tell you. Where did the echo injury come from? He just played an all-star game. Exactly. For 17 years, he played in the house like for 15 or 17 years. And guess what? He's not playing tonight versus Steph. Nationally televised game. Damn. Get the fuck out of here. Hey. It's ridiculous, man. So, dude, what, and there's a few other guys. There's a few other guys who have a cold now. They're all sick. Maybe they all caught diseases in Vegas. I don't fucking know. So... All right. That's my bad. Pay these zooms or chance the whole goddamn thing. Hey, End the story. We're gonna wrap this up, Rudy. We're we'll wrapping this up now. Hold on, hold on, uh, hold on. I know yeah. I was mad. He's he's writing us, you guys. He's telling us to shut the fuck up and move on. But real quick, real quick. Um, what would you do about the uh, the amount of three point shots that are being taken? I got. Well, there was ninety seven threes by the by the by the East and 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 seventy five by the West. So, and the West was 35%, which tells me that they really can't shoot. Do you have a uh, – all right, we're not going to go there. Do you have a problem with the three points that's been taken during a regular season game? I hate it. I think it's not basketball, bro. So, you, you know that already. I, I don't think it's basketball. Since we're going trending in, in this direction, here go. This is what I'm going I'm to I'm throw out there. Get rid of the three-point line. No, 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 no. We're not going to do that. Let me tell you how many shoot per game. No, I, I thought of that too. But check me out. For the first eight minutes of the quarter, you're playing like everything's two points. Two points and one point. <laughs> the last four minutes of each quarter, three pointers count. Hey, all of that, if they don't do a throw, they're not going to do anything. They're not going to do anything. For the regular season game. Oh, right. oh my God. So the last four minutes. Yeah, that, that, four that's minutes. not going to happen. That's what you talking happen. about? They said the three point shot was not going to be something, and now it was a gimmick. And they want to make the games by one. You want to make it one point per basket? No, no. The two pointer shots are still there. You still get free throws, but the last four minutes of each quarter. So there's no threes for the first eight minutes of every quarter. Don't, they don't count. Oh, I never, I never. Well, you know what? It would get basketball that I like from back in the day. I think it'll it's get like, basketball that it'll, it'll it will feed everybody who wants who likes basketball. Like okay. You'll feed the people who like three point shots because the last four minutes, when you kind of need buckets and you're trying to catch up in, in, in those situations, they count more. So the first- See, this is why we need a moderator because you've been talking too goddamn long. No? <laughs> this is why we need a moderator. We're not listening to right, him. He's yelling at us now. All right, we're so, all right. we're going to get our second topic here. It is Steve Wilkes. I don't know if you know who Steve Wilkes is, but Steve Wilkes was the defensive coordinator, was the keyword being was, of the San Francisco 49ers. He got fired three days after they lost the Super Bowl. Nick, what are your thoughts? Fucking fire him. Fire him. Fire him. Somebody got to go. Somebody got to get the fucking blame. And he, he was the guy to get the blame. What the? Come up with something for Patrick Mahomes. Yep, you were the guy. Yeah, I know Rudy you might come in and say something else. Hey, decisions got to be made. You got to shake up the locker room. Hey, what? you know why you got to shake up the locker room, Rudy? Because every year the Super Bowl loser, they come back and they do fucking horrible the next year. So this is what we're going to do in this locker room. We're going to make, we're going to put motherfuckers on notice. You might be fucking next because we got rid of the D.C. You might be next. You can't, you come in here the next show, this blase, blase attitude, Super Bowl hangover. Guess what you got? You're out of here. We're making changes. Anything that didn't work, we have to fix it because we didn't get it done. And now y'all looking at me. I'm the head coach. And y'all gonna put your eyes on me. But you know what? I'm gonna blame deflector. I'm gonna put it on somebody else. And you ain't just gonna be blaming me because I done blew two Super Bowls or three Super Bowls now. You're not gonna be looking at me. I gotta put it on somebody else. And you know who, who that guy's gonna be? Hmm. The guy who couldn't get a stop in the second half when we needed one. We needed one of them. And you couldn't do it for us. 
Our defense was in shambles. We were in zones. We had no identity of how to stop Patrick Mahomes. Nothing that we did stopped him. It, we, we had nothing. I'm not taking the blame. But you are. And you know what? That's putting the rest of these guys on notice. Bosa is putting uh, 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 Warner, Greenwood. You know, even though Greenlaw, whatever the name is, um, if he played the game, they probably went because he was out there balling. Yeah, I think if he if he hadn't got hurt, they'd have won that game. Probably changed the whole thing. But Rudy, you know, as a as when you lose a Super Bowl, you cannot come back the status quo because it's been proven year after year. Who went to the Super Bowl last year? Who? San Francisco, San, San Francisco, and Kansas City. No, no. Who who went last year? <laughs> oh, Philadelphia and Kansas City. And how did Philly go? They they, they fell apart after the ten one. Fell apart. Um, every year this happens. Every year it happens. So this is what we're gonna do. The Bengals went to Super Bowl. What happened? They came back. They were they, were, they, they lost in the NFC Championship. Yeah, they, they were pretty. They were pretty solid. But everybody else before that, they didn't even make the playoffs most of the times. Okay. So here, here are my thoughts real quick. I don't want to drag this oh, one on at all. Sorry, hold on, hold on. I know, no, go ahead. I know you had the third best defense and things in that nature. But he just basically took over from the previous two defensive coordinators that got head, head coaching jobs. So that they were running their things and they were running things that were comfortable. And maybe, they, like they said, they probably did put him in a bad position to try to follow the same suit. But... Rudy, we gotta make it we gotta make a decision. Somebody gotta go. So, not, so fit so <laughs> so fit matters. If you hire someone, he's only been there, he was only there for a yeah. year. So you hired a guy who was at Carolina, mm-hmm. and at Carolina he blitzed forty three percent of the time. And in San Francisco, they blitzed nineteen percent of the time, which was thirtieth in the league. Yeah, because they believe they have a good pass. So, so my feeling of that is you hired a guy who does not match your philosophy. Nope. So why'd you hire him? He wasn't going to get fired if they won or if they lost. I don't think he would have been there regardless. No, he would have been there. I don't know that he's there regard. I think they were going to fight. He would have been fired regardless. Teams There's a philosophical change. difference. Huh? Teams that win don't make changes. Well, he may, he may not have had to been fired because you probably got a head coaching job somewhere That's else. More than likely. But the way it looks is like you fired a guy who was third, had his third defense, best defense, who you essentially castrated as a defensive coordinator. Because if I'm a blitzer, I blitz. And if you don't allow me to blitz, and that's part of what I do as a defensive coordinator, that's like saying to Steph, you can't shoot the ball, Steph. You can't shoot. All you can do is dribble, make layups. You cannot shoot from the perimeter. Every shot you take has to be within 17 feet. Well, Steph Curry, if that's what his, if that's what he was re- restricted to doing, he could, he would, he would suck. He would suck because mm-hmm. the only what makes his game is that he can shoot off from like next the next yeah. building over. Mm-hmm. So you take away this guy's ability to blitz, and it it changes who he is. So that's why I feel like he was probably going to be out the door regardless. He may have quit. I don't know. But he yeah he finished third in the league in passing and rushing defense. They were third overall. They had a great defense. Yes, I completely agree with you. He shit the bed in the fourth quarter. In the fourth quarter and overtime, he shit the bed like he that's his job. So and for anyone to sit here and say you know well Kyle Shanahan's job is to score points. Yes, absolutely. You act like he's not playing a great defense on the opposite side. The Kansas City Chiefs had a great defense. So this whole thought process that. Oh, my God, they didn't score. No, they had 22 points, and they had to lead three times in the last 15 minutes of the game. They had a 16-13 lead. They had a 19-16 lead. They had a 22-19 lead. You had three separate leads at the end of that game, and each time your defense blew it. And there were, look, like I said before, there were holdings that I, that were badly missed that I've seen video after video of, and people say I'm crazy. I'm not blaming that. I still believe that special teams cost them that game. Because if Bosa, you don't muff that, Bosa, that had pu- still, no? Bosa had still ran down that damn line chasing that motherfucker. Oh yeah, he did that stuff. He was yeah, he was chasing you know, he was chasing he was chasing Sky you no know, rice. He was chasing rice. I know we discussed that last week or whatever. But they lost that game on special teams. If you don't have that muff pun situation, they don't lose that game. Extra point. Uh, and the extra point that as well, you know, so they you know, do I think it's uh, – is it a bad look? 
Yeah, I think it's a scapegoat situation. I think you're blaming somebody for why you lost rather than being a team now. I don't think you'd have been there regardless because I don't think they match philosophically, but it's not the greatest look to fire this guy after he had the third best defense in football and he was the coach and you didn't really let him do what he does. So you don't think I, you don't think the philosophy changes when you have different players? Like when you have different players, you 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 should coach towards your players. Well, blitzing though, if you blitz, you, you probably some the good coaches could adjust to what you have and what you don't have. You have Bosa on the D line, you know. I still blitz. I'm a blitzing defense accordingly. I'm blitzing still. I can have them on the line, but I'm st- I'm not going to go from 43 percent blitz rate to 19. percent That's a humongous. If you don't have to, if you feel like you get pressure without blitzing, you in Carolina. You that, who, but who is the one feeling that way? Is it him or is it my, Kyle Shanahan? We don't know that. That's the, we don't know. Well, we do know it because Kyle Shanahan. It's Kyle Shanahan. It's Kyle Shanahan. Kyle, Kyle literally came. He literally came out and said, "You know, we kind of try to." <clears throat> Make the de- the defense comfortable from the coaches that we had before. We try to keep the same structure that we did before. So mm-hmm. all right. So we're gonna wrap this one up because we went all the way over on the all style game. But um, this was a quick one on what we wanted to touch on because we didn't get a. Ch- <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um. So we just got yelled at in the background because, you know, Donald's internet's not working, but he can still yell at us through, I don't know what he's doing, how he's doing it, but he, he's I able to do it. He's, a, he's on producer's mode, but he's disappearing from our screen in the background. So I don't even know if he's on or not. He's, <laughs> but, but it, clearly he is. Um, so now we're going to that section of the, of, of the day where we don't have the clock behind it because Donald does that stuff. Um, but the... No, the most entertaining. Donald doesn't do that. It's our crowd that's here that that. Clowns. Oh, okay. It, it, it's the most entertaining, according to Donald. It is our most entertaining section where you never know what he's going to give you. you. You just have to sit back and enjoy the ride and see what he's got to say about whatever topic it is. It is that time for Rudy's rant, and of course, I am Rudy. Oh, and I have a lot to say about Ooh. a lot. Huh? Who who would have knew? You're who would have knew? So this is why I'm going this week, and this is almost a two. This is a two part situation. I'll try to keep it as brief as I possibly can because I get long winded. Well, I did hit on this a couple weeks back when I spoke about Caitlin Clark and Cheryl Swoops. Caitlin Clark, if you weren't watching, last week broke the record for most points in NCAA in women's basketball history. And she'll probably break the overall record for points that is held by Pete Maravich um, in the next few games. Caitlin Clark busted, I think, 49 points to break the record. She hit a logo three to break the record. I don't know how, I mean, she was hitting shots from everywhere. She was nine for 18 from three. She was 16 for 31 from the field. Absolutely unbelievable performance. I think she also had 11 assists, or something like that. 13. See, that's what that's what, 13, what was it? 13. 13? It was high. This is then. This is what people forget, don't want to forget to understand. Caitlin Clark is not just leading the league, the country in scoring. She's leading the country in assists. So before people shit on her and say all she does is shoot the ball, she actually is the one dishing the ball too. So. I'm looking back at this situation. She placed a record last week, and everyone is congratulating her. You name the person, they are congratulating her. Starting with the woman whose record she broke, Kelsey Plain, Angel Reese, Tom Brady, Calvert Cheney, Brittany Griner, Gus Johnson, Zach Eady, Dane Lillard, uh, Peyton Manning, Eli Manning, Jackie Stiles, who had the record before Kelsey Plain, I think before that as well, Alex Morgan, the U.S. soccer player, Billie Jean King, Barack Obama, the pres- the former president of the United States, Pat McAfee, Magic Johnson, Don Staley. These are just some of the names that I found that actually congratulated her publicly for what she did, for that accomplishment. You know who they? Cheryl Swoops. The woman who a week ago was taking a shit on her, two weeks ago was taking a shit on her and saying that she's 25 years old, is in her fourth, fifth year of college, and takes 40 shots a game. She said that on the Gilbert Arena's podcast, Gil's Arena, and she took a hell of a lot of heat for it nationally. I know this because I've been on all these boards, and she is getting crucified, and she deserves every bit of it. 
She had the chance to say, I'm sorry, I was wrong. She did not. On the podcast, she could have done so. She did not. She doubled down. She made more ridiculous statements. So recently, while she was doing a broadcast, she, I'm looking for my paper because I wrote it down. Here we go. Cheryl Swoops claims that she texted Caitlin Clark, and I will read what she stated. She says, a couple of weeks ago, I reached out to Angel Reese and had a really good conversation over the phone. And I sent a text message to Caitlin. So you called Angel Reese, but you're texting Caitlin Clark. Okay. Uh, I mean, if you just took a dump on me, you know, nationally, maybe I should deserve a phone call too. I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, she responded and she and I went back and forth. I won't share what she said. I'll leave that to her if she wants to share. But I was so what I said to her was I made a mistake in saying it was your fifth year when it was your fourth. I mean, Nick, you're the most forgiving human being I've ever met in my life. You, is, is, that an, is that an apology? Um, no, nah, she didn't. She, she ain't. Okay. Man, just... No. Hey, look okay. at Suits. I'm looking. Suits, come out here and tell them how to real, how you really fucking feel. Tell them you don't fuck with her, and that's what it is. You don't fuck with her. You don't like her game, and and that's what it is. I'm okay with that. Rudy's definitely okay with that. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. tell her how it T I no T is. That's what it's. Just it's so it. if you taking shit on me on a national platform. Publicly, you're a po first of all, this is not an apology. I made a mistake, it's not an apology. Because you only said you made a mistake when it comes to your fifth year, not your fourth year. You also said she was 25, not 22. She just turned 22. You also said she takes 40 shots a game. I don't care, and I repeat, I do not care what her opinion is of Caitlin Clark. I don't care if she doesn't think Caitlin Clark will be a great WNBA player right, coming right out of college. I don't care, because that's an opinion. You're entitled to that opinion. I respect it. I, I, I genuinely, I respect it. But when you're lying about people and then you want to come back and sit here on a, on a broadcast where she was doing commentating for a, for a game and say this type of nonsense, oh, if Kevin wants to save my ass and tell the world what we said, fuck you. Why does she, not, why does she owe that to you? She doesn't owe you that. You should have been apologizing. I'm sorry. I was flat wrong. I wasn't, I did not know where I, I just thought something that was completely off and whatever you want to say, but none of it is, I made a mistake over you being in the fourth or fifth year. Get the fuck out of here. You shit on her publicly over something. You apologize publicly over that same thing. You don't say, Caitlin, you want to come and tell the rather I told you? No. Did you even talk to me? Just have me a text message. Because I'd be damned if you freaking do that to me and we're going to have a text conversation about it. Fuck. I mean, even you responded to a dumbass. <laughs> so that was that. I, I just thought that was really ridiculous. You know, you lie at something publicly three times. They have national platform, Gills Arena. Shout out. I love that podcast, by the way. I will say I love that podcast. Those guys are awesome. But you cannot sit here and say, we had a text conversation and I'll let her reveal it if she wants to. Because you know what? You just did it. You revealed it. And now you want her to come back and cover your ass? And you know what she also... And so if you have a problem with her, if you have a problem with her, wouldn't you be the first person to congratulate her publicly for breaking that record? The man that you just said that she would have gotten that wouldn't have been hers because she played too many games, too many seasons, blah, 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 blah. All that bullshit? Come on, man. Come on, now. Let's, 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 let's be real about this. She made some day she up. She lied. She got caught. She didn't think anyone's fact check it. I don't know why she didn't think that. Oh my God. You know? And you're talking about a girl who's going to be ending up picking the NWNBA draft next year if she decides to go back, you know, into the draft. Because, I mean, she'll make more money with that at Iowa. <laughs> but, you know, it, she, she'll, have, she'll be able to pick the draft. And on top of that, saying that she won't be good coming out, would you say, did you say it about Don Jirasi? The last two hours, 19 players coming out of college. Well, first year. Indiana's not really good, which means Caitlin Clark's going to get shots. She walked in as the best player on their team. I looked at their roster. Their roster is nothing. They got Rhea Boston from South Carolina, who was a rookie. Mm -hmm. 
You put her next to Caitlin Clark. That's an even fearsome ass duo. That would be that would be a hell of a duo. There, this girl Kelsey Mitchell, I think was her name, um, who, who, who led them in scoring. But they weren't very good. Now I think it sucks for Caitlin Clark to end up in Indiana. I mean, you hope you'd rather have her be in a big market, you know, for what she's bringing to the game. And look, if you have, if you don't believe she'll be great immediately, that's fine. I don't have a problem. Like I said, I don't have a problem with that. But when you say shit like that about how you had a conversation, man, apologize. Grow the fuck up because you know what Cheryl Swoops said? She, she made her Twitter private. You think a Paul Halfley has private Twitter? Yeah, I'm running. No. Yeah, yes. It becomes private when you lie about somebody and you're probably getting DM to death by Iowa fans. <laughs> so that's the first part of my rant. So, oh, again, you, I will you, say again, Cheryl Soups, if you don't like the girl, just say you like the girl, man. But don't sit here and make a bullshit. Don't sit here and say you apologize. You didn't apologize. You didn't apologize. I made a mistake. It's not an apology. I never heard. Man, gentlemen out there, if you make a mistake with your wife, do you say I made a mistake or do you say I'm sorry, baby? <laughs> say both. Um, you say both. <laughs> you covered them both. There you go. Second part of this one is Jay Williams. Did you see what Jay Williams said about Caitlin Clark? Yeah. Is he high out of his fucking mind? Of course he is. I am not going to go down the road that some people think because, you know, some people were saying it's racial. I'm not going to sit here and say it's racial. I'm going to say he's just stupid. I'm going to say he believes. There's a lot of people that believe how, how that think how he thinks. If you don't win, people don't respect it. All right. Caitlin Clark, he compared Caitlin Clark. He says, he says, firstly, his first statement was, I am unwilling to say she is great yet. I think she is the most prolific scorer the game has ever seen. I hold, gr I hold great on lovers of immortality on the Pantheon to when you win championships. He then followed that up recently by saying, all of you keyboard, keyboard courageous people that want to call me a bang or try to make fun of my career, none of y'all could hold me. I'm not making fun of Jay Williams' career. Jay Williams was an awesome basketball player. Jay Williams was one of the best basketball When he was playing college ball, he was one of the best basketball players I'd ever seen play ball. And it's very... Bro, he didn't even get it. A... So, so I was told the Chicago Bulls fans don't feel very highly about Jay Williams by my producer in the background. And I understand because he's a Bulls fan. But it's probably also because the guy got into a bad yeah, horrible yeah. motorcycle accident that ended yeah. his career after year one. Yeah, he didn't get um, one. Well, well, I'm sorry, I was lost in an When up on management told me he couldn't have one. I mean, yeah, you should ride a motorcycle if you've been told you can't have one. I agree. But Jay Williams, as a ball player, was a stud. Now, let's also look back at when he won his championship. Who was he playing with? Was he playing with the 11 white girls from Iowa? Most of which are not McDonald's All-Americans? Or was he playing at Duke and was the MVP of the finalists still there? Someone named Shane Battier? Yep. Who was an All-American National Player of the Year in high school? Oh, Mike Dunreavy, a frail five-star recruit? Um, was Carlos Boozer on that team? I can't recall. I don't know if he was or not, but and Boozer was on that team. If he was, I'm, I'm not sure. But I know this. I know that. I'm sorry. I know that he was. I know that I looked up that Jay Williams was the third leading scorer in that championship game. He played a trash ass game. He was four for thirteen. I know in the in the final four, he wasn't the MVP of the of the final four. He was the leading scorer of the tournament. But he wasn't the MVP when it mattered. So does that dis diminish his championship and his greatness? No. It does not diminish his greatness. He was a stud. He was number two pick in the draft, I believe. Correct, Matt? Back when I could be yeah. soon? Yes. I could I, I, I correct. Yeah. yeah. But the Chicago Bulls. Yes. So he was number two pick in the draft. Then they would argue how good that guy was. So when he makes these statements, this is where the problem I have with this new generation of if you don't win a championship, you suck. What the fuck are we talking about? Karen Clark just set a record that will unless that girl of Juju who's at uh, USC probably will stick around for four years. Yes. Unless she continues at the trajectory she's at, well, may not ever be broken. 
Like it will take a Herculean effort to break that record, and you gotta stay for four years. You can't do it in three. So you say that you make this comment, and like and you talked about, you know, he's from the Kobe mentorship and all that bullshit. Bro, was Charles Barkley not great? Amazing. Was Colin Malone not great? Amazing. Was a, I mean, was Alonzo running? I mean, look, we know Alonzo was a backup when we when he won a title. Like, let's not talk about this. Wasn't Zoe as a center to what you know started all NBA player to backing up Shaq? Mm-hmm. Was he not great before he won? Was Michael Jordan not a great player until 1991? I mean, yes, he won a college championship as a freshman. Um, what are we talking about here? We're, still, we're literally not quantifying greatness. And then she compares it. He compares it to Diana Taurasi. Uh, Diana Taurasi played with multiple McDonald's All-Americans on her teams. Let's not delude ourselves. This is during UConn's generation of dominance. So we're not looking at saying who's playing with Tweedle D D and Tweedle Dumb. She was playing with stars, okay? And I don't have the names. I wrote the names down. What the hell are my names? Shit. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Is there any things I got, bro? Where the hell did I put this? Okay. Uh, She played with... uh, Where did it go? But she played a bunch of studs. And then she also mentioned Brianna Stewart. Brianna Stewart played with Mariah Jefferson, Kaya Nurse, Gabby Williams, Kaya Spanks, Kalina Mastero Lewis. Kalina Mastero Nurse is a national player of the year. Well, we, we, we can't compare. So you're comparing girls that played on with the greatest teams of all, some of the greatest of all time and the, the greatest, the greatest program you let in. I well, has never run shit. We need to be mad with the fuck out of right now in this basketball is because of Caitlin Clark. If she doesn't win the national championship this year, it's not because she's not great. That's like, that's like, who who that remind you of? Who's that remind me of with what? If they didn't win the championship, that would mean they're not great. But they came into the league as an okay player, but he is probably a top five player of all time. LeBron? Kobe? Nope. The best shooter she- of all time. Steph? Yes. Steph, exactly. Was Steph not great in college? <laughs> yes. Like, what are we talking about? Like, this is this step, this this commentary by Jay Williams is literally delusional. You know, if, if you're going to sit here, how can you sit here and say the leading scorer of all time is not great? And she's not just the leading scorer, my man. She leads the country in assists. She does it all. No one's sitting there saying they're called the GOAT. I don't know whether she's the greatest female player of all time no. in, in college basketball. Yeah, I think from my lifetime, she's the best one I've seen since Cynthia Cooper. I said that a few weeks ago. But if you differ in opinion, I'm fine with that. But to sit here and say she's not great, and then he changes up, no, yeah, there's great, she's great. And then she later on said she's great in a response while he's threatening keyboard warriors and shit, while he's playing the role of the keyboard warrior himself. Like you're threatening people off of a freaking another, another tough guy threatening people on video. Like, yeah, you couldn't hold me. What are you gonna do, Jay Williams? Stop, stop it, bro. Like, you said some stupid shit. Everyone knows it's stupid shit. And you basically just said that anyone that never won a championship is not great. But let me tell you right now, Charles Barkley's a top 25 player of all time in the NBA. Maybe 30 at worst. Malone, definitely top 25. They're not great. John Stockton's a top 30 or 35 player of all time. One of the best punk guys ever. He's not great. Like, that 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 level is so done because so much luck goes into winning championships. Look at the man. I mean, this is crazy. But look at the Miami Hurricanes basketball team right now. They were in the Final Four last year. They were killing people. And yes, the difference between the Hurricanes this year and last year, they're hurt. They're, they've been hurt all year. I'm not saying they're going back to the Final Four, but they look like shit because their whole team has been injured. They were missing two starters here. People say, like, they beat them up 30 yesterday. Yeah. They were missing 32 points in their starting lineup. They have a six nine rotation. Good luck putting in that fashion. They can't make a freaking layup. Like, it's a luck situation. It's like the, the Niners. Drake Greenwald gets, gets knocked out with his Achilles. You change that defense. You play football. You got it. It's, it's, 
you need the bar bounced the right way. You need the, I mean, you need the call to go the right way. I mean, you can look back at Dwayne Wade and you win. Did he really get fouled? On that, on game five, going to the ring? Yeah. If you were a Mavericks fan, did he really get fouled? Yeah. <laughs> so, That's Jay right. Williams, I respect you. I thought you were a monster. But when you make statements about how someone's not big because they won a championship, I mean, you can kick some, that, that's some bullshit. Because you were still great, even though you weren't the reason they, the Duke won the national championship. You were not the reason, because actually you played like trash. They won that day in spite of your ass. Jim Battier was the team MVP, was the final four MVP. Okay. So that's where I got. Caitlin Clark, I got much respect for your game. And now I'm really tired of it. I'm gonna be real. This is this is why you know the, the swoop thing is. There's only there's only so many decent white basketball players in the world who are American, not Europeans, but American basketball players. Why are you so flipping? Uh, what's the word? Why are you so triggered or so? Afraid of that one girl or that one guy being so fucking good. Like, it's rare. It's rare. Boy, the league is like 85% black in the NBA, probably more than that. I mean, I think miami has got more white dudes than anyone. <laughs> we got a Mexican guy, actually. <laughs> and they knock his. Um, what, are you getting, like, what, what are you getting so upset about because a white girl is good? Like, it, 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 it helps your game. If some, I, I don't get that thing. Like, don't be threatened by it. Like, the reality is there's one Caitlin Clark. There won't be too many others, if ever. So, Cheryl, you're still great. Cheryl Soups, you're still a great player. Have luck when you played. You were awesome. But, man, what are you so, what are you bothered by? Like, God forbid the white girl's pretty that damn good. Get the fuck out of here. Stop it. So, I say, uh, what I got for Louie's rap today, I hope you all enjoyed my little rant. I don't think it was as, passionate as my first one because i was trying to keep myself a little calm but we are what i want to go right now into our newest segment is the da, 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 Knicks picks our resident gambling expert who gambles two dollars a game to five dollars and he hedges his bets to make 12. what do you got for us this week Nick? all right man i'm sticking with the nba this week Ooh, I had some time to think about this. Um, tomorrow, well, today, <laughs> get your picks in. We're going all NBA. We're going to parlay this thing. This is what I'm going to do to put a little extra 5 to $10 in my pockets. It might turn into 30 to 40 because I'm going to 14 parlay this thing. All right. So what I'm going with, I'm going to take the Wizards. Minus four, well, plus 14.5 against OKC. You know why? Because the last time OKC played a minimal team in the Portland Trailblazers without all their players, they won by a lucky call. So I'm going to say that Kyle Kuzma come back at pool, and they're going to play relatively good in OKC. They're coming off a break. Shy just played in the, you know, Shay, you know, Shay just played in the, in the All-Star game. He's a little, you know, on a chill mode. I'm going to make these other picks a little quicker. Miami Heat over the Pelicans. I like that. 125. Miami plus 125. Take the money line. They're going to beat the Pelicans. Jimmy's back. It's about that time of the season when the Heat play a little bit better basketball. They're ready to roll. The Bucks over the Timberwolves. Plus 160 Milwaukee. I'm rolling with Milwaukee. This is that's three teaming right there. Milwaukee over the over Timberwolves because Milwaukee, they know what time it is. Doc is getting a lot of scrutiny. Bam, I mean, not Bam. Oh Lord have mercy. I'm thinking about Bam because Lillard said that he'd rather play with him. They're getting a lot of scrutiny over there. Milwaukee, Giannis, Lillard, Doc. They're gonna come out firing tomorrow. Well today. So those are my three teams. And then my fourth team, I have an easy one. Suns, minus 3.5 over Houston. Lock it in. 
They're going to beat the shit out of Houston. They're going to Houston. Durant's ready. Book is ready. It's that time of year. After the NBA season will start till after the All Star break. So that's my fourteen parlay. Wrap it up. Put it together. That's what I'm rolling with this week. And I'm gonna win some money. And guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna spend it on Rudy getting a toupee. Nice hair, hairline. He's gonna be. He's gonna be. He's gonna be popping this week. I got you, Rudy. Look out for me. My extra money going towards you. I got you. A toupee would be really expensive for me. <laughs> Are you gonna grow up? I mean, you see these barber videos now where they're charging one hundred fifty dollars for a freaking fade, which is absolutely insane. That's why I just shaved my head. I'll put one right on your front tooth, right there. So you're gonna you're gonna grow it on here, and then new, I'm gonna have like a faded like with with hair. New hairline, bomb like LeBron. <laughs> you're your best deal, LeBron. New hairline, same thing. Oh yeah, boy, right here. Oh really, boy. Really. I hope y'all up. That's my so, fourteen parlay. Those those are Nick's pick. What? Go ahead, Nick. That's my fourteen parlay. I'm putting in for this week. I'm not going to go too crazy. Four-teamer, bam, I'm hitting it on. I don't know what y'all are doing, but that's what I'm doing this week. So those are Knicks picks for the week. Remember, those are Knicks picks. So don't if, if they don't work out for you and use them, that's not a, that's not on us. Those are, and Nick will have lost $2 as well. <laughs> so they're Knicks picks. Thank you, Nick, for your picks of the week. We'll be doing that on a weekly basis now. Um, on to the next topic of discussion. Giannis Antetokounmpo, this guy has really figured out how to not, to, 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 to I, I don't even know what to say. This man in the All-Star break said that he does not watch basketball. First, do you believe that he was joking? Do you believe that he was telling the truth? Or do you think there's somewhere in the middle? Because he wasn't laughing when he said it. And at times, from what I see, it, it's entirely possible that he doesn't really watch basketball because he <laughs> next on mistakes that if you watched a little bit of film and you saw tendencies, well, you know what? If he doesn't, I love it because please don't watch any film on the Heat because we will just wall your ass, wall your ass out again, like we've done multiple times. But what do you think of that, Nick? As a if as a consumer of the game, as a fan, if you're a teammate. Because I would say this to you. If the surgeon who repaired your Achilles never saw a scan of your leg before the surgery and just decided to cut your leg open and say, oh, shit, these are not torn Achilles. Let's see how we figure this out. You know, I haven't looked at a scan and well, I mean, MRI or whatever it is. Would you really want that guy having doing surgery on your leg? Or if, God forbid, you're in, in going to court for a, a crime and your defense lawyer who you've had a different one the entire time, and then all of a sudden, this new one shows up and it's like, well, I haven't read any briefs. I'm just going to wing it. Man, your freedom's on the line. I'm going to wing it. Rudy, Rudy, this is How all, do you feel? This is all bullshit, man. We know, we know Giannis watched film. Giannis is a student of the game. He loves basketball. He could tell, tell us all this shit. And I think he was in one of his dad jokes, you know, little mood that he be going in where he tells these little corny jokes. I laugh. I find them funny. Maybe because I'm a dad now. I mean, knee slapper. That was funny. Um, but um, Giannis watches film, man. You watch. First of all, you watch film as a team together. You break that down as a team together. Does he go home and watch extra film? Hell yeah, he does. Don't listen to Giannis. Giannis, even though he said honestly, I don't really watch the film. He was he was bullshitting this man. You could tell. Besides the Miami Heat and their wall, Giannis figures everybody out pretty good. Whether between, but whether whether it be with his athletic ability or just his knowledge of the game, Giannis figured things out. Giannis know what he's doing. Giannis is just messing with the media right now because he's just getting a chuckle off off it. He's taking the heat off of Doc. Doc, they're like three and seven since Doc took over. Taking the heat off a little. He's doing what a leader would do. You know what he's doing. Mamba mentality. <laughs> he honest is in Mamba mentality. You know, he looks up to Kobe. He respects him. You know. So, I don't have a problem with Giannis. If he was my surgeon, I would trust that Giannis goes home and checks out every graph and know what to do with my Achilles. I trust him because I know Giannis is a hard-working guy. Everything he does is hard. He works hard. He goes hard, pause, and he makes sure 
he, 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 he makes sure everything, he dots his eyes, crosses his T's. So, I believe all that he said was bullshit, man. I'm, there's no way that Giannis doesn't go home. We're in the, we're in the facility to watch his film. There's, there's no proof. There, there's nothing that you can show me that say he does. I, I tell you what, I believe every word he said. And no um, I don't think it was a dad joke because he usually laughs when he does dad jokes. He didn't smirk. He didn't smile. This wasn't and a... And he, he was like, he, I like the competitiveness. Uh, like well, he like he says he likes to make it harder on himself. Like, yeah. I, I just, if, if he was joking, he missed. Yeah, no, he missed. He missed. Lot. He missed badly. But he, I, I, I enjoy his little things about books and stuff like that. And then McDonald's the first time and... All those fun little things he talks about. I like Giannis. But that is a bad miss. And that's a bad look if that was a joke. I don't think he was joking. Because I, I do see massive holes. And you, when you when you look at certain things now, I'm like, did he watch film on this? Like, we've been doing the same thing for three straight games. And he still is not changing his what approach. See? What do you see? He turns the ball over a lot. Um, he That's doesn't. He shouldn't have the ball like he does. Well, he, he shouldn't. And, and again, if you've watched film, no. Look, do I? I don't think. I don't think teams in general watch as much film during the regular season. It's hard. For, it's hard because the, the games are close together. Imagine back in the day when they played every other day. Now they have three days in between. But I don't think they get to watch that that type of film. But when you said I don't watch basketball, that's where I was with. Not film, basketball. I don't watch basketball. Like you're a professional basketball player. And this is why I make the, compar- the comparison to LeBron. LeBron's an encyclopedia on basketball. LeBron can remember every single play, which I find remarkable. Um, so you see I'm complimenting him. Like, it's remarkable. Rudy really loves LeBron. <laughs> so, I, I mean, but it's remarkable to see that he can remember that in a press conference and say, this happened, this happened, boom, boom. You're like, Holy shit! That's exactly what happened. He remembers it like a like, like a like he took a picture of it, and and so when you look at when I look at my superstars and I look at the guys that are the best players in the world, you don't become the best player or the best player in the world by not watching film or not watching basketball. Like I'll tell you, why that goes back to some stuff with the All Star game where you know if you ask some of these guys like Anthony Edwards, like if you ask him who X Y Z is, he probably has no freaking idea. Because these guys today are soft and they're not students of basketball. They don't love basketball. They love the they love what comes with it. They love the money. They don't actually love playing basketball. Like you said last week, why would you skip games? You don't know when this is going to end. No. And you know, and for someone who's recently retired, like you, you don't know when that last ball will come. We know that Kobe, if he does not get hurt, probably would have played longer. Yeah. You know. So when you hear that stuff, like they don't know the history of the game. When you're saying stuff like I don't watch basketball, like, you're a pro. How do you not watch basketball? Really? That's crazy to me. That's been going on for a long time. Not, not, nah, real ball player. Like, like, I didn't that, watch, to me, no. to me, that, that, didn't to, know, to, that didn't know the history of the game like that. Who? Shaq. Well, oh. Shaq also spent 20 years getting speaking lessons, and he's come a long way. Like, I'm sure Shaq today knows way more than he knew when he was 20. Giannis is 30 plus, like 30 years old now. He's been in the league for a decade. Yeah. I mean, it, and Shaq is a special mental case. I mean, <laughs> for what it's worth. I, I just think it's a very bad look. And if you're trying to sell it as a joke to your fans, your consumers, if I'm a, if I'm a, a Milwaukee Bucks fan, what you're you like, do? What? You shut the fuck up and come to the next. No, I'm going to sit here and say, are you serious, bro? There's a re- like we're trying to sell in the last ten years. Tell me you don't watch film. We have a new coach because you fired the last one, and the new coach fucking sucks. Yes, Doc Rivers sucks. He does not fit the situation. It's early. It's early. Yes, and there's things that he has actually fixed, but let's be real. They're three and seven. They lost to a G League team. No, they didn't. Yeah, they did. The also, the Memphis, Memphis, is, Memphis' entire team was G League players They're that night. NBA. Yeah, because they got bought up to play that game. They were G League players. The replacement. 
the replacements on the replacements weren't. In- I'm a new year. They won the Falafel yeah, like this. Oh, they never defend the playoffs. <laughs> so that was the Julie team. Now I will say that we're gonna jump into it right now with uh, the Doc Rivers, JJ Reddick, Austin Rivers, Pat Beverly deal. That bro, like you're the star of the team, and you got you lost to a Julie team. It's so like maybe I don't like it. Maybe it's and really that the situation. I don't. I- it- I want my so, to be light about the situation in that hand because uh-huh. or I want him choking motherfuckers out. Either one, pick one. <laughs> Find which one you want to do. He could ch- so maybe. So what do you think? I was on my Giannis real quick. What do you think about Damian Lillard saying his starting five would be? Uh, do you say Steph, LeBron, KD himself, and Ben Adebayo? He left off his teammate, who's a is it, yeah, that's a two-time MVP. I'm not sure, one or two, at least once, but definitely once. The optics, um, the optics look like shit. Like, how the hell are you? Look, you could be best friends with Bam all you want. How would you take that if you're honest? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's clear. How do you think that, I mean, as a lip to the public that you picked Bam over Giannis? Like, let's, let's like, just, because I I seen some remarks saying did was it just asking about Americans or was it everybody in the league? It w- it was everybody in the league. Who would you choose as your starting five? Uh, it looks it looks it looks piss poor. It looks bad. No, it sounds like he's almost like looking to force his way out of Milwaukee. It, it looks piss. It look bad, man. Their whole situation right now look bad. They don't look like they get along too much, but. He doesn't want to be there. No, he never wanted. He never wanted to be there. But he made that very clear. Yeah, and but when you get the opportunity to play a top two player in the world, you're gonna take it. Especially when you have never won a championship, you have to take that opportunity. He probably would have been happier in Miami, but at the end of the day, what they gonna do about it? They gonna make it. They gotta make it work. And didn't he sign an extension? I think he signed an extension uh, with Milwaukee. Yes. Uh, no, um, no, Dame. I think Dame signed an extension when he got Dame there. He already had a couple years left on well, He has at least a few years left. I, I genuinely believe. Oh, he signed with, with Portland. Yes. He went over there. Yeah. Like, I, I really think he's really setting himself up to try to get traded. He's really going to push to get traded to Miami. That's my belief I mean, because at, you don't think so? At this point, I mean, I'll still take him. Yeah, I mean, I'll still take him. Of course, I'll take him. Um, but I think that's what he's pushing for because he's having a terrible season right now by his metrics. Like his season is the worst season he's had since he was a rookie. Um, I don't care about that. As long as he, no, I know, but it's because he's unhappy. I'm saying that all, all that matters to Milwaukee is the playoffs right now. How could it, yeah, they could, they could have lose, first seed all don't, over again. Don't lose to Miami again. Huh? <laughs> don't lose to Miami again. I hope. I hope. It will be, it'll be the sixth. They'll be the favorite. We'll beat them again. I hope. <laughs> I hope, but I'm just saying, um, yeah, Dame didn't make that situation any better by saying those things. Of course, you got to throw your big man in there. He could have been fucking Julius Randle or a fucking average player, but the, the one of the best players on your team, you should probably just just for aesthetics, just for how it looks, you know, optics, everything that you know. We're gonna be in the locker room together. I don't want the reporters just coming to me and or oh, your teammate said uh. He's not picking you on his top five. Now that's another fucking dumbass question I got to answer when I really don't want to answer those things. I want to talk about basketball or how I don't watch film. That's what I want to talk about right now. I don't want to talk about my my teammate who's a, a top 75 player and I'm a top 75 player saying that he don't want me on the team. No, for a player that's not even a – who's on the Miami who, – he who's not even a top 150 player in the – in the world of basketball. But but it's not his obligation to do that. Ooh, Rudy, you motherfucker. You motherfucker. You went there with me. <laughs> you know what? I, I think it's a horrible... It's not, I, I think it's a horrible look. All right. I, I, it, it just... It it just reeks of there's problems in that locker room. Like, like, there's problems. Obviously. There's problems. And I know that Giannis has been sitting here saying this is Dane's team. Like, no, no the hell it's not. It's, it's your team. Like, stop. You're trying to be a leader. If, you're, if that's your way of trying to lead them and say it's his team, blah, blah, blah. It's not. I think it's a terrible look. I think, and it's and it, and it happens almost at the same time they just had a coaching change. Like, what the hell is going on in Milwaukee? Well, I, I, I appreciate your response to that because I just think it's a bad look. 
But that goes until I knew. I, I, we're, we're keeping these topics yeah, quickly now. Huh? We in Milwaukee a lot. Huh? We in Milwaukee a lot. Really yeah, we're in Milwaukee a lot right now because Milwaukee had a lot of stuff going on. Doc Rivers versus JJ Reddick. Yeah, Doc Rivers versus JJ Reddick versus Austin Rivers versus Pat Beverly. JJ Reddick went scorched earth on Doc Rivers on Thursday earlier this week. Where did that come from? He just, well, he just went scorched earth because he wasn't even asked. He basically said that this guy, all he does is he has no account. He says Doc Rivers has no accountability. He's never his fault. And blah, 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 blah. He played for Doc Rivers for four or five years. He had the best stretch of his career playing for Doc Rivers. Then Austin Davis comes from behind and says and defends his dad and all that. And they both went to Duke, so they have that Duke brotherhood, whatever the hell crap they got going on there. And then Pat Beverly jumps in and says, how the hell are you talking about your coach who you had your best years with? And then and then J.J. Reddick comes back and says, you know, he saved your career. He's like, fuck out of here. He said, my career. I had a four-year deal with a player option for the same money to start somewhere else. So he said, fuck out of here. J.J. Reddick went squished earth. Do you think it's a personal situation? It's definitely a personal situation. The man, he lit him up. And I didn't know where that came from because I'm thinking like, damn, JJ, he 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 messes with him, man. I'm thinking like, damn, they had a good a good thing together because Doc obviously ran his offense through JJ because he's a shooter. He comes off screens. You have to run your offense through him. You get slip screens off him. You can use him. But JJ not just out there getting his own buckets. So I'm like, damn. Doc actually, I when I used to watch the clip, I was like, damn, the whole offense run through JJ, you know, down screens, all these things. What's the problem here? He I don't care what JJ said. Doc made his career. Doc Doc made his career. JJ in Orlando was okay. You know, he got another he went to Milwaukee, did a couple other things, but we weren't looking at JJ in the light that we looked at him. In Clippers, like when we got to the Clippers, he was a serious threat. We we respected his game because he played with good players, and also Doc was a coach that got him open or found ways to get him the ball in great ways to score. Score. It was unfortunate that they didn't win a championship. They had chances. They had, you know, the the, the right team to get it done. Injuries messed them up, and I think that's that's the only thing I could think about. I don't know what was deeper than than that. JJ has to tell us some that we obviously don't know. I would never know the truth about this situation because there's something that he that he smashed JJ's wife or something. I don't know because we know that stuff goes on in the NBA where the players are banging coaches' wives and why player and coaches are banging players' wives and who the hell knows what's going on in the NBA. But I I, I listened to that and and then JJ, you know, I have no problem with what he said. It's his opinion. I mean, that's his belief, and there is video. After video, after video, after video, showing all the nonstop excuses that Doc Rivers has made over his career. So that could be a, a form of accountability. Now, but he suffers, but, he, but he's always been accountable in the fact that he's been fired three times. So if that's not accountability, I don't know what is. It's responsibility, at least. Now, if you sit here and say, yeah, you know, we didn't get back on defense. Well, yeah, that's accountability. I mean, what, what, is he supposed to sprint back on defense for them? When they lost to the, to, the, to the G League Memphis Grizzlies, was that really Doc Rivers' fault? Like, how do you blame the coach? Because, like, as you know, in the NBA, coaching matters not about that much. It's really about your players playing, competing, and, and putting the ball in the hole and playing hard. If you don't, now, look. There are plays you can, things and things you can scheme and devise. That's fine. But Milwaukee should never have lost to that Memphis team. And when, you, when you're talking about accountability, like, I mean, he's been fired. Now, he made excuses early on. I said, why'd you hire me? And I think he's kind of in jest saying that because realistically, I think he was kind of slimy for even taking this job because he looks like a slime ball for having basically – you're the mentor, the consultant, the coach that just got fired and they hired you. So wouldn't you attribute the consulting that this guy had to Doc? That doesn't make sense. Now, I will say this. Defensive, defensive efficiency for the Bucks in the 10 games 
has gone up to 10th in the league. So he's improved their defense almost immediately. Problem is, their offensive efficiency has gone from like first or second to like 30th <laughs> in that same space, gone to the bottom third. So they're not scoring now. So they were def- before they're scoring, not defending. Now they're not scoring and they're defending. So it's like, it, it's a problem in Milwaukee. And I think this is Doc Rivers' last job. If he doesn't win, he will be gone in the next, not the end of this season, but the season after, he'll be out of there. Um, yeah, uh, I I agree with Austin Rivers. I don't necessarily agree with Pat Beverly saying he made his career because if he had a job offer for four years and, a, and another and a, and a player option to start, he didn't save his career. He may have had the best years of his career there, but I don't think he saved his career. Yeah. You know, I, I, I look forward to seeing if J.J. ever tells us the truth, because Doc will never tell us the truth as to what happened. That said, we have a couple more things on before we wrap it up. Um, this is no ordinary that I talk about. I'm a UFC, MMA. I love MMA, bare knuckle, bare knuckle fighting. And this past weekend, we had UFC 298 um, in California. I think it was Anaheim. And uh, we had Alexander Volkanovsky defending his belt against Ilya Tuporia. Ilya Tuporia knocked out Volk cold in the second round. Put him to sleep. And I got to tell you, you could see early on in that first round that Volk did not look right. He wasn't moving well, and he was moving back a whole lot. Tuporia was setting, resetting, fainting. I mean, he missed, uh, there was some breakdowns of, of, of the fight where you could see, like, he was just missing, just missing, just missing, landing, but then just missing. He was real close. And eventually, with his quickness and his speed and his footwork, and he comes in, bop, bop, makes you know, overhand, good night. And he put him out. This is the second time now that Alexander Volkanovsky has been knocked out. Uh, he got knocked out last fight versus Islam Makachev about three months ago. So now there's questions right now, you know, what does the Volkanovski do next? I mean, he wants a rematch, but do you really want to have a rematch immediately when you've just been knocked out cold twice in the last three months? That doesn't make for a good idea. I think he should probably take a break for about six months, let Toporia fight somebody else, and, and then maybe try to come back and get a rematch. I don't think the result will be any different. I think sometimes it all it come what it comes down to is it comes to an end. And with MMA and bare knuckle and that type of fighting, you don't know it's the end until it's the end. And you see it happen over and over. You know, we had Kamar Usman recently. He gets beat by Leon Edwards. Um, a fight he's winning for, you know, pretty much clearly winning three rounds to one. And he's winning round five. And then all of a sudden, Leon Edwards lands a you know, head kick dead. And then he comes back and has an immediate rematch, which probably was a mistake for him because he was knocked out cold. When you get knocked out cold, man, it is a hard thing to recover from. And, it, and you know, as a person who was fighting, I know Donald's a big fight fan as well. For him. He boxed himself for a, lot, a long time in his youth. Getting knocked out. Man, once that chin gets rattled, it 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 it, it goes, <laughs> you know. And so to to you know, then Kamal comes back and he gets beaten again by Leon, and then he's he's lost three straight fights, you know. So I, I, Volk now has lost three out of four. Guy that was unbeatable literally a year ago, you know. It, it, it's 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 wild to see how quickly an MMA fighter's career can go from here to here. I mean, we just saw it with Israel Adesanya in the last year year or two. Um, with him losing to Sean Strickland. So, yeah, we're going to have our MMA corner, our bare knuckle com- what they call it the combat corner, um, because I love MMA. I love fighting. We'll be doing a lot of bare knuckle stuff and uh, checking out these fights. I've been to some bare knuckle things recently. and some crazy shit going on there. And, um, yeah, uh, that, that card overall was real strong. I enjoyed the Paula Costa fight versus Robert Whitaker. It was a fairly close fight. I thought Costa won, actually. Um, but you know, I it was very close. And another fight on that card that was really of note was Jeff Neal versus uh Ian Gary Machado. And I thought Jeff Neal won that fight, I thought he won the first two rounds. And uh, round three, you know, I thought Machado, you know, Machado Gary won that. Um, 
that round, but he got the decision because sometimes, you know, these judges are swayed by, uh, well, I think they're being taken care of, but sometimes you see guys that get winning fights that don't look like they won that fight, and you listen to the cheerleading commentating going on by the UFC, and it, it's pretty clear where they're, where they're leading. So that's what I got for UFC 298. We got UFC 299 in Miami on March 9th. If you haven't gotten tickets, I'm promoting the UFC. You should get some tickets. I mean, they're pretty expensive as hell, but um, big-time card. Sean O'Malley versus Chido Vera. You got Dustin Poirier versus Benito. And it does what the hell is this freaking? He's a French dude. <laughs> His name, um, Saint Denis, Benoit Saint Denis. Um, you got Gilbert Burns on that card, big time card. I, I can't wait for it. And uh, yeah, we'll be talking about a lot of new fighting. Make sure I start watching some fights, man. And uh, watch it. Well, finally, what what's up? I'm watching. You're welcome. You're watching with me, man. Yeah. But well, final topic we'll, of the night. We gonna get in the car and go watch it. Before we go. Before the break, LeBron James, there was a phone call from Golden State to the Lakers about LeBron James. They wanted to make a deal for LeBron. And they told the Golden State Warriors to call Rich Paul. Which tells me that LeBron, the Lakers were open to trading him. But LeBron James said no. Are you surprised? Uh, no, I'm not surprised. The man likes it in L.A. Everything is good for him. His son is there. His family is there. He's not going to go to state. Do we want to play with Steph? I think yes. But he can go there next year as a free agent. There's no rush to get there. I think they have a good thing in L.A. Um, what we talked about last time, I said um, the Lakers are the – I think they, in a seven-game series, they're the toughest team to put out besides the Nuggets. If they get to the playoffs, as they should. Oh, uh, you know, because they might be in a seven or eight playoff seed, you know, play the playing game. But if they get in the playoffs, I don't think any team matches up with them like directly. Like, oh, that team could de- is definitely going to take him up. I think they have a fighting chance against everybody else besides the Nuggets. So why would he want to leave them to go to a team that right now is below them? They're not going to have all those players that's there besides him and stuff, and that might be good enough to get it done. And I would love to see it, but I definitely think you have a better chance in L.A. They have a nice roster. D'Lo's been playing amazing. Austin Reed's been playing good. Hachimura been playing great as a starter. They finally made him a starter where he should have been the whole time. I don't know what the hell the problem was of holding him back from not being a starter. But, yeah, pencil them in as the second best team in the West. So I just got a producer note. J.J. Reddick does not regret what he said about Doc Rivers. I love it. <laughs> I love it. You know what? Double down, baby. <laughs> if you believe some shit, say it. I have no problem with it. As far as LeBron, I'm actually kind of proud that he said he, he turned that down. I, I'm actually happy that he did because if he didn't, it would have been it would looked ridiculous. Like, bro, you, you, you really don't believe in yourself. Like, you, you re- that, that to me, that's a complete acknowledgement that I can't get this done by myself. I can't get this done. And really, let's be real. The Lakers aren't going anywhere. But Steph Curry, now who would they have traded? I mean, I'm sure Donathan Kamingo might have been involved in that trade. Uh, I, I don't know. Would, would Draymond have been in that trade? Would, 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 would Clay Thompson? I don't know who they would have included in that trade. I think Kamingo would have had to have been included in that Clay trade. Kaminga. Um, but I'm actually happy that he would say no because when I heard it, I was like, shock, really? They would like the Lakers saying that they call Rich Paul just tells me that they're open to doing it. Um, because I think they've I think they've had enough of this. Then the Lakers are are, are done with the LeBron exper- ex- experiment and experience because he wears on the franchises. He's tough to deal with. It's proven he's tough to deal with. He's very, very Diva-ish in Miami. Let's be real. He left for a few reasons. One of the reasons was that we would not hire. Well, we as the Miami is, we're both Heat fans. Would not hire his his bestie to be his be, to to be an employee for the Heat. They wouldn't let him travel with the team, his secretary or whatever the guy is. So, and then you know, they, Miami let go Mike Miller, even though Mike Miller was completely completely washed out. Like big deal. You let go of a guy that wasn't playing. Like what are you talking about? So. I, he's a tough individual to deal with, and he seems to always want what he wants when he wants how he wants it. 
So I'm actually impressed that he said no to this and says, I'm going to stick it out with these guys and let's see what happens. You know, I don't think they're going anywhere, but I, I, I actually am impressed and I, and I applaud him for that. God forbid. Imagine that two compliments in one podcast for LeBron James. It's amazing, huh? Clean the lamb. I'm not, I'm not, I, I don't sit here with agendas and, or anything like that, but I keep it, I keep it a buck. Uh, he, he has my heart and soul. And yeah, I would start trying to follow you off of him right now, you know, on a, on a player for player. You know, you're talking about a 24 year old or 25 year old for a four year old. I will draft. Ronnie James. But, oh, get the fuck out of here. Right now. Ah, on Jesus any Christ. Price to get LeBron James. I will I don't care. I would not. I'll waste, I'll waste any pick that's beyond a lottery pick to get Bronny James. And, and you pick you use a first round pick on a kid that's averaging six points on a bad I mean, college I mean, team. I don't to know. hopefully have one season with LeBron. Two seasons with LeBron. He's not playing two seasons. Why not? He's waiting for the he's forty years old, man. So he can't play till he's forty one. Robert Parrish, forty four. <laughs> 43. LeBron. Did you just compare Robert Parrish who was playing like six minutes a game to a guy who you expect to carry your team? No, he don't have to Come carry on, my man. team in Miami. He has to be the third, second. Did you say he's a third, the third scoring option? No, he could definitely come in and, and, and dish the rock. He's still going to score. LeBron is not stopping. He's the machine. LeBron is going to retire in the next two years. Okay. So, you can see it. Like, you can he, see the regression coming. I mean, you change. can't yeah, change it. five points per game. It sounds like he ain't good. I don't care. Like, what are you doing? I don't care. Give me him. Oh, LeBron. my God. Right now. As long as my pick not a lottery pick. And if it's outside lottery, like 13, 12, 11, give me. You give an 11th pick on a kid that's averaging – 26 percent from three not in college. Him. I'm drafting his dad, that's why, which are not because if you freaking draft his dad and you don't win in the next year two, then what? That's why we have a freaking he's retired. That's why and we, you have a player that can't play. That's why we have to be a playoff ready team. Miami Heat, come on. You think, LeBron, you think LeBron James is going to a team where his son is bench warming? Come on, and not playing with him. Come on, home. come on. Home. Yeah, no, I'm saying, do you think LeBron James? The goal is to play with his son. I can, Not you have his son massaging the chair with his ass. I can find while he, five minutes for Bronny. What is this, Little League, Nick? I find five are, are minutes. We, are we playing I-9 now? Is this I-9? Josh Richardson, find five, five, five minutes. Josh Richardson would take Bronny's lunch, and I don't even like Josh Richardson that much. Come on. So that's about it, fellas. Do you have anything else for us today, Nick? I'm good. Nothing on your mind? I'm good. We definitely need our producer, Donald, to be on here to control us because we were talking way too much. We're now over an hour 30. I could do this for two or three hours. I actually enjoy talking. It's something that we know. But we're, we're going to wrap this thing up again. We thank everyone for their support. Please like, subscribe, comment, share our videos. Let the world know we broke a hundred thousand the rest of the month. We want to break two hundred thousand by the end of freaking the middle of uh shit. What month are we in? By the first week of freaking March, I want to be over two hundred thousand. So everyone, help make that happen. We appreciate you. We love you. We're out of here. Come on now, let's go.